Hey, Pat. Hi, Dan. Matt. Hey, how you doing? All right, we're, we're all here. Uh, Matt, I know you've got some crazy thunderstorm activity going on down in Florida. <laughs> so just so everyone knows, if, uh, if anything strikes, you can disappear. Yep. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep going. But so let's, let's get right into it. Um, Pat, I'm going to start with you just so we talk a little bit about Twitch and set the scene. Obviously, everyone knows Twitch as the video game streaming platform, but it seems like with... Uh, with COVID-19 and for all the bad that it's caused, it's been an accelerant for music live streaming activity, specifically on Twitch. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that looks like and how you as the head of music strategy, how that's, uh, how you've been dealing with that and what you've seen. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, look, I mean, we, um, we feel fortunate that we're in a position to take what Twitch has built for gamers and gaming creators and try and find ways to help artists in a time when they can't tour, they can't be with their fans in a physical space. And what we're really trying to figure out now is how do you transmute what has been built for gamers uh, in the context of live streaming themselves, play Fortnite and Call of Duty and all these wonderful titles um, in an, in, into a sort of a digital space or a venue that allows for um, artists to trial, to get involved and to start experimenting with content, um, you know, in, in an environment that is not a Zoom conference call, right? <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or a webinar. And, uh, and we have an amazing creator from Twitch uh, here on with us, right? my colleague here, Matt, um, who is a recording artist. He has been, he's Twitch OG um, and, <laughs> and can talk to, uh, between the two of us, can talk to you about what the opportunity is for artists, uh, how they should get going and get started. Um, and, uh, and Matt is certainly the expert on that. And I'm sort of here to kind of help uh, provide some context about the platform and the resources of the platform and what we're trying to do to help accelerate this sort of new fan and creator engagement. Sure. So Matt, you have a really interesting stream because it seems like what the default for a lot of artists to do is just to take what they do on stage and do it in front of their laptop or camera. And that's, that's skeuomorphic design thinking. It doesn't work, right? What you do is uh, calling it a variety show wouldn't be right, but you're doing <laughs> audio production, performances, gaming, you're chatting with fans. And it's something that it seems like you could only do uh, as a live streamer, right? So do you want to talk about what you do every day on Twitch? Definitely. Super quick backstory. I joined Trivium in 99. It was the first band I ever tried out for, ever made it into, became my first job. My second quote job ever in life is live streaming, playing my music for incredible, in front of incredible people all around the world. I originally wanted to jump into Twitch. I was already a fan of it through guys like Shroud and Dakotas. Those were my favorite streamers to watch at all times. And um, Paulo, our bass player, one day he mentioned, Matt, you should start picking up streaming on Twitch. So about three years ago, I started. I started streaming games at first, because that was, that was the heart of what Twitch was. And it was around the two and a half year mark, I visited San Francisco and I was invited by all the people at Twitch to come down and check out the HQ. Met everybody, befriended everyone. And um, two of the people there, Brandon Volition and John Howell, meme dude, those two guys both said, hey, why don't you stream from this? They passed me a Gunrun backpack. Gunrun was one of the original OGs of Twitch as well. And he built this live streaming backpack. At the time, I'd only been streaming games, brought that to the show, streamed the show. I was like, this is really cool. I started falling in love with that idea of streaming the show. So from that moment on, Trivium has actually streamed every single live show for the last two and a half years. Every single one's available for free on my Twitch and all past, past broadcasts. Um, about another half, a uh, couple months progressed, visited San Francisco again, went down to the HQ, brought a bunch of Trivium stuff to give to all the staff at Twitch, thanking them for what they do, because I've, I've been a long time Twitch fan of what they do. I said to John and Brandon at a dinner one night, I said, I love Twitch so much, but I wish I could stream more, more games, but I have to practice one to three to five hours a day off tour to keep vocals in shape, guitar in shape. Brandon looks at me and goes, why don't you stream that? And I said, Brandon, no one wants to watch me do my opera exercises every single day and practice guitar warms. He's like, I bet you they do. At that very moment, I got home, my Twitch channel completely changed. So what I do is I focus in on the chops and the hours that it takes behind the scenes. It's like you said, it's not just a live show. Twitch is all about engagement. It's about two-way connection. Trivium has only ever had our fans. We've never been a press band. We've never been a band's band. We've only ever been built by our fans. So with Twitch, I wanted it and I looked at it initially, just another way to stay in touch with them. 
just another way to give back because they support us for everything we do in Trivium. And I wanted to keep that connection going, get to know my, get to know our, our fans and our supporters even more so. So that's what I've seen Twitch as, as an incredible way to build a community and to know the people. If you're a band guy, band guy or gal coming in already established, you bring your audience to Twitch. That's what I did. It wasn't band guys start streaming on Twitch, Twitch gen pops like, all right, I dig this guy. I'm going to check this out. What I did was I educated our fans on you need to check this new platform out. We can hang out for hours upon hours and we can do whatever. Today I was um, creating gypsy jazz music for just the heck of it. I just felt like doing it randomly. And my friend programmed some accordion music for me. I was doing mouth trumpet sounds on top of it. Like you could do anything you want with this platform. I've done jujitsu, cooking streams. Um, like I said, every single tripping show, every single sound check and every single warm up for every single show for the last two and a half years. And I like schedule. I like regimentation. I love being able to stay connected. So when I'm off tour, it's five days a week, two streams a day. When I'm on tour, it's seven days a week, one to three streams a day. Um, days off for eight hours of games, show days, warm up, sound check, and show. So that was a lot. Sorry. I love it. I obviously love the platform. It has given me life. I've become a better singer, screamer, guitar player, frontman, speaker, thanks to Twitch. And I'm not just saying that because we're here. But what that is, is me doing this practice regiment every single day, day in and day out. A side effect of doing something a lot when you're doing it correctly is you get better at it. So I've been able to become a better singer screamer. Our last record took us 16 days to record. We budgeted three months, but it took us 16 days to track the whole thing because we're all so prepped and that's because of Twitch. And Dan, if I could make two, just two quick points about that. First off, I, w I listened to Matt during his, uh, his vocal uh, practices earlier today, which was awesome uh, and entertaining. Um, but he said two things that I think are really important. The first is, and I wanted to connect the dots to the other artists who might be listening, you know, to this webinar uh, or the Zoom conference. And the first is, it's not necessarily just about live streaming yourselves perform. What is really valuable is for your fans to sort of see what goes on when the cameras are off. But in this case, the cameras are on. What is Matt's life like uh, when he's in between performances? How does he practice? What's going on with his gear uh, and having a conversation? And so that sort of speaks to content format. What should artists do? We hear that all the time. What should artists do? And the answer is take them inside your world and collapse the screen so that they get a sense for who you are and, and, and what type of artist you are and the sort of the breadth of your creativity, right? So I think that's point one, number two. Uh, point number two is, um, it, and, and I think you, you, Matt alluded to this earlier, which is uh, Twitch is a place where it's not about having 5 million people follow you um, and, and having some thumbs up or thumbs down and, you know, that kind of like interaction. What it's really about is kind of what David Kelly wrote about in his book, which was sort of like a thousand super fans, right? Like, how do I connect with a couple hundred fans or a couple thousand fans and that community in turn will support you? They will help you fundraise to buy new equipment. They will help you and sustain you while you're going, you know, you're practicing and moving on to your next gig um, with direct financial contributions through channel subscriptions, uh, bits and advertising. And so um, I think those are two salient points around content format and just sort of community and monetization, uh, which is what really separates Twitch from, uh, from other platforms. That's great. And, and Matt, it seems like what you do really, it, it, there's a value transfer. You're providing so much value to fans day in and day out that you're building up, I guess what we call goodwill. And when you go on tour, when you release an album, they're probably that much more excited to, uh, to share it with their friends, to buy it, to go, on, uh, to go see you at shows, merch. Um, one thing that I think is really interesting, you know, with social media, obviously you've been seeing fan comments now for years, but with Twitch, it's actually a real time two way conversation. What is that? That's gotta be totally different than anything else you, you do. What has that experience been like? And uh, talking directly with the fans, what have you learned about your fans or interactions uh, through that? That's what separates Twitch from everything else is that it's not just like we've, we've, talked about it's not just about a live show happening and then people seeing a comment that no one ever sees it's about that two-way interaction it's about this living thing that all of a sudden is existing um i love so much that i know my subs by name i know them i've met them i've seen them at shows what's so incredible i have some incredible moderators that all become really good friends actually they're all in this chat i'm looking at the facebook chat right now they've all met each other some of them flew down from europe and from around the states all to go to one of our mods swears wedding 
They're all super close friends now. They took pictures all there. They sent me pictures of them hanging out at the wedding. They visited Orlando for the honeymoon. I met up with them, hung out. So that's what I love to see. And that's what, that's what Twitch is for me. It's about creating a community and a family. And it's, it's an incredible thing. There's nothing else like this in the world that I've been able to have this attachment to our fans. It's not the same as Instagram. It's not the same as YouTube. It's, it's so much more. It's connecting at the heart level with the people that support you. And as we're talking about the other levels of support, What's incredible about Twitch is that I love that it's for everyone. Like we've got some, we've got some viewers that have gifted thousands and thousands of subs, some that have donated a lot of money, some that have donated a lot of bits, some have bought a lot of merch. And I always tell them, whatever your level of contribution is just fine. If you can only hit that follow button, that's the only thing I make mandatory in my channel. Just press follow. That's all you have to do. Anything else you want to do on top of that, if you have the means to support and you can and it makes you feel good, by all means, go for it. It supports the channel. It allows my wife and I to work from home when I'm off tour. I had a lot of tours just get canceled. I've had a, we decided to release our record during a pandemic. We didn't push our release date. So all physical sales were basically nil because it's all purely streaming and streaming takes a lot. It takes a lot of streams to equal a sale. So back to the contribution thing. So if I tell our viewers, if you have the means and you don't want to, then don't. If you don't have the means and you feel bad, all I want you to do is hit follow and have a good time. So people can kind of scale what they feel that they want to contribute your channel with. And, and the fact that my wife and I are able to work from home because of Twitch and we're able to spend this much time with our kids, I mean, pandemic or not, it's, it's really an amazing thing. Yeah, and I think that's, I think that's sort of a, an interesting point, which is like the audience is already trained to support creators, right? So they, they'll go from channel to channel and they'll say, oh, today I just, I'm really just grokking what Matt's doing, but you know, tomorrow it's you know, Kenny Beats or it's you know, some other talent. And, and, and they're just, it's not like, um, it's not sort of, a, it's not a charity thing. It's a contribution from a love thing and a respect thing. You know? and, and the way I sort of try to characterize it is like Twitch is in many ways kind of like a FaceTime conversation. That sort of warm, deep emotional connection that comes from having a conversation with somebody is kind of the, the Twitch is the sort of the closest thing to that. And you can imagine with that deep emotional connection, you start to build bonds and those bonds then feel like create this sort of sense that I want to contribute and support because I want to see more of this creative output come into the world. And that's what we're really trying to build. And, and then the thing that's really interesting with that on Twitch is the, the actual monetization aspect, the fans uh, subscribing or, or buying bits. Uh, it feels kind of like a game. It feels fun. It doesn't feel like I'm clicking add to cart on some e-commerce store. Uh, and I've seen artists use some fun ways to, to kind of gamify that, where it's like, if, you, if five people subscribe, I'll do X. Pat, can you talk about that and some interesting ways artists have monetized their streams? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I love when, um, when creators will say things like, uh, this is a sub only benefit, right? Or, or whatever. And they'll say, you know what, like, hey, I've, I've, I've streamed for like an hour, but I'm going to stick on for 20 more minutes just for my subs, just so that I can show them love. That creates an incentive effect for people to subscribe to creators channels, but it also gives them a value exchange and a reward for doing so. I have closer proximity to Matt uh, behind that sub only period. I can be acknowledged and recognized uh, by my favorite creator and have my question answered. Uh, sometimes they're like, hey, do you mind listening to my beat and give me some comments or thoughts about what you think of my, like my creative output sounds like. So that, I think that's kind of like a really cool and natural way to sort of figure out a reward system um, in addition to more sort of overt, you know, ways. And maybe I'll, I'll let Matt ask because he's actually the one who's the expert in this, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was another incredible idea from my friend, Brandon Copert Volition, who's at Twitch. Um, he said, I, I was talking about all the covers I've done because I was experimenting on other social media platforms doing these extensive cover work. I post these videos, no one really watch it. I was like, all right, what am I doing wrong, Brandon? He's like, I think people want to see the creation of it. And that's what I've told a lot of my friends. I've helped some of um, my good friend, Jared Dines. He was known from YouTube. He is now transitioning to Twitch because I was talking to him. Why don't you show the process of what it takes to create the final output? So I'd be doing these covers. And I tell Brandon how long it would take me to learn. He's like, oh, what does it take a couple of days? And it's like, no, I can generally learn a song I haven't, I've maybe only heard half a time in about 15 minutes and then do my own spin on it. 
So he said, why don't you do a sub only bass thing called Kichi Chaos Karaoke, Kichi Chaos is my game tag. Um, we turn it on sub only, we turn it on for five minutes, we start at $1. And I was like, Brandon, are you, are you sure? He's like, yeah, start at a dollar, just let it, let it do its thing. And like, as we've said, for people that want to contribute because they know they're supporting something and people have different, different abilities of how they can support, we have done a lot of covers, a lot of incredible covers that the winners of that, then they donate to the channel. It supports the channel, creates all this gear. I mean, you could see some of this stuff, but this is basically a stack of amp heads that I've been buying vintage amp heads. And that's stuff that the community has helped us create. And we've been making records with that stuff. They've been helped producing songs. Like today, when I was doing that gypsy jazz stuff, I was like, doing a guitar solo here, mouth trumpet here, we'll get ideas. Um, we've done things where every single day, at the way I start my stream, every single day, the subs shout out what Trivium songs they want. We have nine records now, and we build that set around that. So I, I'll take out randoms, but it has to be the subs calling it out. So I'll do it from there. So we leave it open for some things. Kichi Karas Karaoke, the bidding part is sub only. Our gaming thing that we do at the end of every stream, it's either we do custom 5v5s for Valorant or 6v6 Overwatch or Fortnite games. It's always with the subs and from people from the community oh, that we know. Cool. So yeah, that's, that's like the extra layer where it's like everyone can be here, but if you wanna to go to that next layer level and if you wanna play some games like today, our Overwatch 6v6, which I smashed some people today very happily with, <laughs> uh, um, that was sub only and it went really good. Cool, Amazing. all right, so we're, we're running close on time. I wanna answer a few uh, questions from the chat. Uh, First thing, I think maybe it's the base level thing that we glossed over. Um, Pat, could you explain bits and subs and the different monetization tools? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, subs are what they are. It, it's a channel specific subscription uh, that goes uh, uh, in sort of direct support to the creator uh, of that channel. Uh, bits are uh, less of a commitment. It's a uh, micro payments. It's a one-off, uh, you know, cheer. It's, it's to recognize and praise a moment uh, or anything else, but it does lead to a, um, uh, a transaction or a revenue source for, uh, for artists. And then the third form is advertising. So we, done, we do run a pre-roll uh, uh, for people when they come onto a channel for the first time and then creators can trigger additional ads um, you know, along the way. Cool, uh, thank you. Matt, I see a question here about the Twitch backpack. Can you describe what's in there or talk about what you, the gear that you found works really well to give you You've got great quality streams, video and audio. Thank you. What's, what should people be using? I have a couple of rigs. Um, basically, to get started, I see a lot of artists talk about when I build a stream room, when I build a stream rig, you don't have to do that. If you're an artist and you want to start streaming, start. Start with your phone, start with your laptop, start with your built-in microphone, built-in camera. Everybody has a laptop. Everybody has a phone. Um, start at that level. As you keep streaming, you can be building that other stream rig. Um, when I first started, if you look at some of my earliest broadcasts, they don't look like much. I started with a PS4 webcam, was kind of interacting with the chat, had about five to 15 people for months, tops, that was it. Um, and then as we switched to music, came something else. I have a couple of rigs. The backpack is four hotspots run by four unlimited unthrottled data sims that feeds into a live streaming device that uploads to Twitch that's fed from a battery that has an HD camera. We actually make a specific show mix for Twitch. So our sound guy has a mix that sounds good for AirPods, iPhones, laptop speakers that runs directly in the camera. So we have DVD quality audio, whatever a DVD is anymore, DVD quality audio into a camera. So people always have HD video and audio for our show streams. That's one of the rigs. My other rig is an Asus Zephyrus laptop. So that's what I game with on days off. My home rig, I figured out a dual, I was looking at all the Fortnite streamers and I saw a lot of these guys were using dual PC setups. Um, and again, streamers, you do not have to do that. That's if, as you progress, you can build that up. So I run all my audio units and I'm actually, I have a mic'd cabinet. Um, I've got like studio gear for the microphone, old vintage heads, all that feeds into a Mac and I'm using a Mac actually as a glorified mixer. All of that audio then shoots out into my PC, which is an Asus PC. And then I have four camera setups. So you see the main camera here. Then I have one for my guitar headstock, one for my picking hand, one for my fret thing up there. So that's this. And we're actually about to buy an old airplane hanger in Florida for our band. And we're going to start streaming every single Trivium practice. And we're going to have like a six to eight camera setup. And we're going to stream every Trivium practice. So we have a lot of rigs going on. Um, and then we have an amazing live show coming up that I cannot talk about yet, but us and Twitch are putting it together. It's gonna be unlike anything that's ever happened before. So there's a lot of rigs, but the backpack, the laptop, the home rig, and then the airplane rig are gonna be the, the four rigs for Trivium and I. <laughs> it's a lot. Great. Amazing. It's amazing. Uh, well, I think we've got to keep moving, but this was really helpful, guys. Um, 
Pat, if, if people want to learn more about kind of music best practices for Twitch, uh, where should they go? Where should they start looking? Sure. Uh, we just created a guide. Um, it's called artist.twitch.tv. It's a getting started uh, sort of section on the web. It does feature the one and only Matt Beefy uh, on a welcome video, and it does get you going. Uh, so that's one resource. And then the second resource is uh, I'm just Pat Shaw on Twitter. Just hit me up and uh, we'll, we'll try and connect you internally to some of our creator acquisition people. And I hope everybody uh, on this stream follows Matt Heafy on Twitch. Thank you very much. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll link to those in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate thank it. You, thank you very much. Thank nice you very much. You, and any, any musician that has any question, hit me up. I'm kind of everywhere. So I'm always able to help any musician that want that they need help with getting over. Thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, thank guys. You. Thank you. All right. That was awesome. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Next, we have Sav Beist of The Accidentals here to talk about OBS. Hey, Sav, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing all right. So you wrote a 30-page how-to guide uh, about OBS, which is insanely in-depth. Uh, what inspired you to do this and go to such lengths uh, to explain how to use the software? Or first, maybe explain what OBS is. Yeah, OBS is a free broadcasting program. Uh, I found out about it because we, as a band, we run a Patreon, um, and we were trying to figure out how to broadcast privately to our patrons. And so I heard about OBS. I got really interested in it. I started learning how to use the program back in January of 2019. Um, and then from there, I, um, I guess when the crisis hit, we started doing a tour of social media, basically. So we started trying OBS through Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, Twitter, I, I, all of them basically. And after a while, I got really tired of Googling things over and over again <laughs> and decided to put information in one spot. Cool, so live streaming has been part of your, I guess put it in marketing terms, your content strategy for a while now, right before, every, before COVID happened. Um, how do you see it playing into your strategy once uh, once you're back on the road touring? How do you see balancing live streaming and playing shows and, and being in a van? Yeah, um, word on the street is that um, even when we do go back to touring, there will be a lot of rooms that are at half cap. And so it's likely that venues will be supplementing some of those shows by having live streaming options available. So it's a pretty good thing to know how to use broadcasting programs before we dive into the next chapter of the music industry. Sure. And so, I mean, it seems like, uh, especially with everything going on right now, live streaming is, is part of the artist's toolkit, right? It's, it's for, especially you, because you're, you're an emerging artist, right? The other artists we have today are um, kind of further along in your careers. Your fans are discovering you either through live streaming or they're becoming super fans thanks to the live streaming that you're doing. Uh, with OBS, what, what are some of the features that it, it allows that makes that live streaming feel less like, hey, I'm just coming to you from my living room and more of a really produced performance? Um, well, I think one of the most important things about OBS is that it does a good job of uh, controlling your audio and really getting great quality sound into most live streaming platforms. Um, oftentimes browsers have kind of a compression setting. Uh, it can cause it to think that maybe your guitar playing is a background noise as opposed to your vocal mm -hmm. coming straight through. And what OBS does is it kind of overrides that natural compression that happens with browsers. So above all, I would say um, getting good audio is the best thing about OBS and uh, yeah. Cool. And you're, I mean, you're using graphic overlays too. It's, it's looking a, a lot more than just you turned on your laptop and hit go live. Yeah, graphic overlays that we made in Canva and we have a virtual tip jar every once in a while that we use via Streamlabs. Um, and what that mm -hmm. does is anytime somebody um, puts in a certain amount of money towards your cause, basically, um, it'll drop specific custom images that you want. For instance, we had a three for T kind of live stream series going on. And if somebody donated $10, then a lemon would drop into this virtual <laughs> tip jar and it would broadcast their name across the screen um, and say, John donated $10 and then this lemon drops in the jar. So it's really engaging and, and fun. That's amazing. And so are you, you mentioned that you, you didn't like some of the other platforms that we're using 
and you're using OBS, is that going directly to people or are you using OBS to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook? What is your preferred kind of distribution for this? Yeah, OBS is compatible with a lot of different places. Um, I've seen Stage It and Twitch do great jobs with it, honestly. And there's pretty much, I went through the whole list in the tutorial I wrote, but I think my personal favorite right now is um, just Facebook Live has this great way of walking new people into the door, similar to when you're touring, you're, you're really trying to get new faces into the venue. And Facebook mm -hmm. allows for such a public vision of everybody being able to tag their friends and walk them into the virtual door. It kind of maintains the integrity of what you do on the road. Cool. And so well, uh, one last question about OBS. I mean, it's an open, it's open source software, right? And so there's kind of different um, versions of it. I see a question in the chat about uh, Streamlabs. Can you explain what Streamlabs is? Yeah, Streamlabs has um, recently, actually, they just put out a Mac version of OBS, uh, Streamlabs OBS. And um, let me, according to my tutorial, um, basically what that means is that um, you can integrate your widgets, you can see your donation history, and you can import your current OBS settings into a controllable place all at once. I still prefer OBS Studio, but it really depends on what's comfortable for you. And there's more info in the tutorial. Great. So where can people find your, your how-to book? Yeah, I can provide the link. Um, I've actually got this chat pulled up right now, so I was just going to drop it in there uh, because in there. why yeah. not? And there's also a really great Bands in Town and Hypebot just did, and Music Biz just did really great write-ups on this. And so um, you can find them there as well. But here is the, I'm getting the link in there shortly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for being on. I mean, there's, if people are looking for more tutorials on top of what you've already provided, simple Google search, or do you have any, uh, any blogs that you would recommend that go into the weeds? Yeah, um, basically what I, what I touched on with Hypebot and uh, Bands in Town and Music Biz, they're all great for that. Um, but I'm just going to drop this Google Doc in there. And oh, somebody just shared the Hypebot. That's so cool. Um, OK, yeah, just click on the Hypebot then. OK. Sorry about that. Great. <laughs> Good. Uh, any, any other best practices you want to share before we jump? Um, I would say there's, there's some really good tips in the bands in town thing that we did. I think, you know, the basic ones are lighting, making sure that you have some sort of either natural light or lamp desk light in front of you. Having a good microphone is really important. Right now I'm using a Shure MV51, which is a great USB mic, but you can also use an interface um, with a regular SM58. Um, and an interface, like Roland makes some great interfaces. It's just the way that your microphone can talk to your computer. So um, those would be the biggest tips. And then, you know, it depends on every social media platform, how you'd like to use that to benefit you. But uh, those are the basics. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Sav. And everyone, make sure you look in the comments for that, uh, for the link to the PDF. Uh, it's incredibly, incredibly in-depth. I can't imagine how much time that took to write. So thank you for doing that service to the artist community. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Great. All right, coming up next, we have Stage It. We have Stephen White and Rhett Miller of VL97. Say, Rhett. Howdy. How are you doing, Dan? Steven. I'm doing well. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. All right, so <clears throat> Stage It has been around since, like, the beginning of live streaming. Was it 2009? That... 2009, yep. So 11 years. So right around when all artists should have started <clears throat> live streaming instead of waiting until 2020. Uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't uh, pivot for this moment. We've been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, and you've had some amazing artists come on. In addition to Rep Miller, I've got a list here: John Bon Jovi, Common, Sarah Bareilles, Trace Songs, Anthony Hamilton, Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> that's uh, that's a long list. So, give us a quick uh, you know thirty second explanation of what Stage It is. Sure, Stage It is a ticketing and live streaming platform for artists. Uh, every show on stage, it is a ticketed show. Um, we believe very strongly that artists' time is is worth something, and so um, every show on the on the platform is ticketed. Uh, the tickets can be uh, ticket prices can be determined by the artist, and the amount of tickets can be determined by the ar artist. So it's up to you to to decide how many you know folks you want for a show. Do you want to do a special show for fifty people? Do you want to do 
a bigger show for thousands of people. Um, we also have a pay what you can feature, which allows you to uh, enable your fans to pay whatever they, they, they can pay, it's especially important in a time, times like now where people are out of work or are under some financial strain um, with a suggested retail price. And then we, we host these live shows. Um, they're typically 30 minutes long uh, with an encore and uh, allow fans to interact uh, with the musicians that they love on the platform. Cool. Well, and speaking of great musicians on the platform, Rhett, how long have you been using Stage It? It's so funny. Listening to Sav and Matt talk, I, I never thought that I would be in any way involved with performing via a computer interface like i'm i'm old school right my band old 97s <laughs> has been around for 27 years now and i was lucky enough to get to ride the last wave of the uh old business model i was on electra records for 10 years we've been touring our asses off um so march 12th i came back from nashville having just that day finished the new old 97s album and i was gearing up to do a bunch of solo touring which is how i feed my two teenage kids and pay the mortgage on our house in new york and um and the dates started getting canceled and i knew because i have a friend who's who was touring in italy uh and he was calling me with sky is falling updates and i and i knew that it was a real thing so march 12th i started researching and like i'm not a facebook guy i've never been able to to do the, the facebook platform um i don't know why it creeps me out i'm like allergic to it but i can do i can do instagram and twitter um so i started looking into how could i do shows to you know to to make up the lost income and somebody recommended stage it and i talked to my friend glenn phillips who had been doing stage stage it over the years since the platform started um and i just thought i'm gonna try this and i'm gonna try and get in on it early so march 18th i did my first stage it show and since then i've done four shows a week and I've, um, I'm lucky enough that I've got a really great Apogee mic, like this Apogee Hype mic is the new nice. model. When I started, I was using the, uh, the one generation older version of this microphone. Um, but that's a great company, and this is a great condenser microphone with a built-in condenser. But, like, I don't know any of this stuff. Listening to Matt talk about it and listening to, to Sav just then talk about the like the backpack and the OBA. I mean, I don't know from any of it. I had done 37 shows on stage it before I realized that my HD camera that I had overpaid for on eBay because now people are gouging with the prices on these things because we're all yeah. stuck in our offices doing music. Um, I wasn't broadcasting in HD, so I did a little research and I got OBS and somebody at stage it, Nick, who was so cool and and helped me figure out how to finally actually broadcast in HD. I end up thinking a lot more about the programming, about how to drive my fans, you know, these decades long fans who like me, I'm, you know, I'll be 50 this year. So I'm, you know, listening to Sav talk, I'm like, is this also English? Because I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> So I'm, anyway, I've been trying to drive fans by thinking up different ways of uh, making the show special. Mm -hmm. and you drive a great point, though. You don't need all the tools to do it. You just you need to get started. You'll figure it out as you go. Right. And if you've been doing four shows a week now for, for how many weeks? Uh, since March 18th. So nine, nine or 10 weeks. But it's like That's, what Matt was saying. Like just start. Just do it. Yeah, it is yeah. like a tour. Right. <laughs> so doing that many shows, I mean, most fans don't follow you all the way along a tour around the U.S. and go to a show every night. So what is that like differentiating between each show and making it exciting? Well, it's a challenge because I'm sitting here. This is where I do my shows and in my office chair in my basement of my home. And it's weird. Like um, I finally got a long enough Ethernet cable to take my laptop up into my treehouse. And I did my Sunday afternoon show from my treehouse this week. And just that, just doing a show from somewhere other than this office. Um, yeah, I miss the road, but also mm -hmm. I've been trying to find silver linings in this. And, and I mean, the main silver lining is the fact that I've been able to replace for the most part, the income I would have lost. And I was terrified when this all started. I didn't know what we were gonna do. Like a lot of artists, I live paycheck to paycheck, you know? And suddenly the prospect of no paycheck for 
I don't know what, six months, a year, two years, who even knows, um, that terrified me. So the fact that Stage It has wound up being um, as good for me as it has, has been uh, like literally a lifesaver. So I'm, I'm pretty That's grateful. Incredible. So Stephen, I mean, Rhett's story can't be unique, right? I'm sure there's a lot of artists that are going through something similar right now. And, and you must have seen a huge bump in activity since uh, tours started getting canceled. Yeah, it's been pretty incredible, the growth. Um, and, you know, we're, we're thankful that folks are you know, taking this time to find the platform and to try it out. Like Red said, you just got to get started and jump in, you know, do a show. When, when people do a show, they see the fan reaction to it. They experience the intimacy of the stage at platform and be able to interact with their fans. You know, people get hooked pretty quick. And it's, I would hope, you know, Rhett would agree that it's not just the monetary component. Like that obviously is a huge part of it. The artists are working and they're, you know, they're, they're sharing their craft with you and obviously they deserve to be compensated for doing so. But it's also just an amazing experience, I think for both sides, for the fans and for the artists to be able to spend time together and interact <clears throat> in this time when everybody's kind of shuttered in, in their house. You know, it's, it's been really great. Yeah, and so yeah, let, let's uh, talk about some of the monetization so that everyone understands what's available because you serve, you're kind of a different uh, level of the customer journey, let's call it, right? It's, it's, Stage is a purchase level type of thing. It's gonna be mostly fans that show up. It's not gonna be people that have only heard you for the first time. Uh, but it's incredibly important because you need to be making money. Like Rhett said, if you're just going live on Instagram, you're not going to get that type of income. Um, so what are some of the strategies, you see even Rhett, both of you respond, that you use to uh, not just make this exciting, but give fans a reason to show up and and pay that entry cost? Um, maybe sure. before we go there, to Stephen, it's to clarify, There's it's paid entry. Artists can set their price, so they can they can do pay what you want, and there are donations during the stream, right? Yeah, there are tips. There's, there's actually a gamified tipping component to it, where every show, the artists will make some sort of reward available to the top tippers, um, and that's awesome stuff. You know, it's signed vinyl. We've had folks give out signed guitars. Um, you know, fans uh, artists will give fans one on one. You know, Zoom calls, um, do concerts with them directly. Um, so there's all sorts of kind of rewards. You can be really creative about thinking of things that your fans might find interesting. That then leads to a, a tipping behavior that's not just, hey, I've got you know, my guitar case out while I'm playing, throw, throw some dimes in here. It's more of a, you know, an interactive kind of thing around the reward portion of it, as well as you know, obviously recognizing the artist for what they're doing. So those are the two main things, ticket sales and tips. Um, and the, the artists, you know, keep a percentage of that. Cool. So Brett, have you tried doing some of the, uh, the donation tips? Uh, the, everybody that um, plays on stage, it has the tip component going. I don't do the thing where the top three tippers each get assigned eight by 10 or whatever it is. Get that, doesn't that sound old? An eight by 10? Um, <laughs> I, I, I've like, for me, the idea of begging for money was the reason I didn't want to go with Instagram Live or Facebook Live or one of those where every five, every five minutes I'd be having to, you know, give out my PayPal or my Venmo and asking, you know, that whole thing drove me crazy. I, one time I did, I crowdfunded an album and the deliverables on it were just, but some people are really good at that. I mean, Sav talking about her Patreon thing and like, you know, Steven right now talking about people that give out signed guitars and stuff, different strokes for different folks. For me, the way that it worked best was the idea. And I loved that stage it offered this pay what you can. So, with stage it uh when people get on the platform i think they have to buy five bucks worth of notes which is the currency and then once they're in if they want to come to my show they can come for 10 cents and i let people know wow. if that if that's all you can afford i want you at my show because it's true what you were saying about this being more than just a monetary thing yeah yesterday i was freaking out i was like really depressed you know there's been a lot going on 
not only in the world, but in our family. And I came down here for my 11 o'clock show, which is a West Coast, West Coast Wednesdays, which is eight o'clock in California, 11 o'clock in New York. And I was exhausted and I had a long day and I was feeling stressed out. And I sat down and I realized there's like, you know, two or 300 people that have, and that's my smallest show of the week. And these people have logged in, they're excited. And it made me feel, it reminded me that I have a purpose, that I it was right then getting to do the thing that I was put on this earth to do. And so even the people that only paid 10 cents, you know, there were some of them, but there were also people that paid a hundred bucks for their ticket. And then there's, I do do a thing where whoever the highest tipper is when the timer runs out on the regular set portion of the show, that person gets to write a request in the chat and I'll play their request during the encore. So there does wind up being a gamification where when that mm -hmm. timer's running down, I'll see people outbidding each other. And that's great. And I, but I know for me, I always make a point to say, don't do it if you don't have the resources, whatever. It's, 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 I love that it's optional. Another really cool thing I think that people might not realize about the Stage It platform is that it's it's untethered to other kinds of social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, where that social media is also where people to go to yell about how mad they are at politics in the world, right? And so I noticed that in the, the chat room on Stage It, which I actually, I can't pay that much attention to the chat room because I'll forget the lyrics. Um, I have a, I have a, a, I have a friend who watches the chat and lets me know if anything really bad is going down or if I need to, to address anything or what the request is when the big tipper wins or whatever. But um, I love that in that chat room, people that if they were on their Facebook pages would might be yelling at each other on that chat room. They're just fans of my music and they're all excited to be there. And maybe they're talking about what pop tart they want to go get and like best. But, you know, <laughs> they're not arguing about politics. Instead, it's like they're at a show, which is the so, other great thing about the platform, because it's not archived. It's an experience that happens right then. And then it goes away. And that really attracted me to the platform. Yes, that's an important part. No recording. This is this is a live experience. It's a show just like a live show. If you miss it, you miss it. And what we're really trying to do is create experiences. And so the time that you spend with that artist is the time that's the only time that ever is going to happen. Even if you recorded the show, you could never get that experience. Um, but we don't record anything. There's been a lot of questions in the chat about rights. We handle all the rights. So as, a, as an artist, you can come play whatever you want to play. You can play covers. You can play whatever you want to play on the platform. We handle all the right side of it. You can use any of these software packages we've been talking about today, but you can also just use your phone or use your laptop. There's a client for, for both that you can use. Rhett was using that when he first got started. He's now on OBS Pro. Um, but, it, you know, it's super simple to get started and, you know, do what you do as a musician already, which is play, you know, perform for your fans. Cool. I love it. And it's just the, the fact that artists are actually getting paid right now. Obviously, right, your situation um, says it all, but that's that's what we need. Too many artists are performing for free and uh, that, that just hurts the arts community. Yeah, the monetization is real. I mean, you have a real opportunity to make real money on, on the platform. Artists are making, the, the biggest show we did this month was $100,000. Um, wow. And that was all for charity, which has felt really good. So we gave $100,000 to charity. Um, but, you know, the monetization is very, opportunity is very real. Your fans want to help. They want to pay for these experiences. So we, we urge folks, like it's, there's a place for standing on the street corner and, you know, playing, playing for the masses, but there's also a place for getting on the stage and doing something intimate for your fans. Incredible. In fact, so, uh, I felt so, I was so excited about, how well it's been working that I, I ended up doing every Wednesday night, um, a, a big chunk of the proceeds goes to uh, Music Cares, which is a mm -hmm. RMA Grammy um, fund helping that it's the COVID-19 relief fund. So I, it's just that thing, like I get it that artists uh, want to do stuff for charity or even just do stuff for free. And if they're in a position where they're not living paycheck to paycheck, um, I don't begrudge them that at all. And, and maybe it could, you could argue that they're devaluing like what I and other people who are trying to replace lost income are doing. But I, I think a rising tide lifts all boats. I really believe that we're all just trying to make it work and whatever somebody is doing to keep themselves sane and or pay for their family, sure. 
you know, go for it. So great. Thanks, Rhett. And so one last question, Rhett. Um, do you see yourself doing this once you're touring again? Because I imagine you're playing sets on stage at that you couldn't tour with, right? You couldn't be playing a, a set of B-sides all across the U.S. or, or maybe the fan base <laughs> is wild enough. Um, but how, what, what does it look like once we're, once we're past this, once people are actually going out? Yeah, it is just dawning on me three in my third month of doing these shows that um, like I've had all these rules that 35 years into I did my first gig at 15, be 50 this year, 35 years of gigging. You open with a loud, fast song. You don't open with a quiet song. We are going to lose the audience right away. Guess what? When I'm doing this in my office, they love it when I open with quiet songs. It's the craziest thing. The world is upside down. Um, yeah, I do really love doing this if um if this is the only thing i can ever do for the rest of my life i'll figure out how to make that work for me um i did just get off a call with my manager and bottom line is i don't think i'll be doing more than a handful of shows until next year you know so for the foreseeable future this is what it is you know and um i love it even when shows really ramp up again i think that me being able to do a gig in my office and play for people in Scotland, Alaska, Finland, you know, Arkansas, all at one time, that's incredible. That's, yeah. I mean, I feel so, I feel like I'm living in the future. So I'm all for it. I'm sure I'll be doing this the rest of my life. Amazing. All right. So Stephen, really quick lightning round of uh, viewer questions before we, before we keep going. Sure. Uh, what about classical musicians and other genres? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We've got a bunch of great classical musicians on the platform, pianists, violinists. Um, we've got um, jazz, a bunch of jazz musicians on the, on the platform, vocalists. We do, we have a, a long running drag show that's been running since March. That is a drag festival. That's been one of our most successful engagements. You can do anything on the platform that you want to do performing live. Um, so that's, it doesn't have to be music either. You know, we've got folks that come in and interview, you know, stars and, and do fan, fan, you know, related interviews and that kind of stuff. We've got folks that are doing, you know, spoken word. So anything that you, any live performance, you, there's a stage waiting for you at stage. That's great. Uh, how does your bandwidth relate to what you're able to put out there? I imagine they're talking about internet bandwidth. Any uh, recommendations? Yeah, you, you, you do need, you know, you do need to be able to, broadcast so you need at least you know eight megabit per second um connection um to be able to to broadcast most people have that if they've got you know a broadband connection the one thing that we do really encourage folks to do is to plug in um to not use wireless and so that's that's an important one to is to you know plug into the ether great all right someone here is asking for the nuts and bolts how does the audience pay how do artists get verified and paid how do you figure the expenses Let's say it's, it's super price. simple. Just come sign up as an artist. You know, you just come sign up and there's a part of the sign up where you say you're an artist and you'll, you'll be set up as an art with an artist account, create your show um, and you know, create your ticket price, how many tickets you want to make available and then start letting people know that your show is available. And then as you're after the show, uh, we pay everybody out within 10 days. Um, so within 10 days, you just request a payout and you get paid out the proceeds from your show. What is the split between stage it and the artist? It's 80, 20, 80% 80 to the artist. Just note that that's the highest in the industry, at least that we're aware of. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, before we jump, Rhett, when's the next stage it show? <laughs> I can't believe I have a night off tonight. I'm actually going to be running my D and D campaign from this chair. Um, <laughs> yeah. But tomorrow night is my Friday friends, uh, which is a show I do where I have like a notable celebrity type make my set list for me. I've had Nick Offerman and Jenna Fisher and Tig Notaro. And um, um, yes, yeah, so tomorrow night is my Friday friends show. And then on Sunday is overseas Sunday. And it just keeps going and going and going. Come check out a red show if you haven't seen one on stage. It's really amazing. I'll be there tomorrow. Great. And I hope some people from, from the viewers will be there as well. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Dan. All right. Thanks, thanks so guys. much, guys. All right. That was great. Um, now let's welcome back Lisa from the Recording Academy and Nicole from Berkeley. 
Dan, thank you so much. Um, I have to tell you, I have the opportunity to talk to Stage It and to Twitch, and I just learned so much. Um, I just want to thank Rhett and Sav um, for joining us, as well as, as Matt. Um, I think I speak for so many of us who are tuning in today. We've learned a ton. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, thanks to the panelists. Uh, Dan, I have to say proud moment too to see a Berkeley alum sort of at the helm. So thanks for joining us today. And I know um, it was sort of a quick uptick as far as all of the prep and getting everything organized. So um, thank you. This was a lot you know, of fun, great. I wanna just um, give a bit of advance notice for some of the other upcoming sessions because in the chat, I saw some questions about Patreon and, and lots of other um, platforms that are helping creators make money in this environment. And um, there are four other, uh, this one will replay again on demand and there are four other pro session events that will be coming over the next month. Um, stay tuned. We will post the link for you to sign up and to get more information and notes about this one that just completed. Um, we really thank you so much again, Dan. And, you know, one of the things that I have been uh, challenging some of the creators who have um, express interest in helping new and upcoming artists is to either do a stage it or a twitch event where people can really use their celebrity to help break up and coming artists those artists who you might have seen on coachella festivals this summer or some of the other sh tours that would have happened i think there's a great opportunity for us to as rhett said um rise all tides that's a great idea well thank you so much for having me and uh i'll let the two of you take it away yeah, so as Lisa said, um, in three weeks, we're going to have a session on leveraging fan and membership platforms. Um, I think that that sort of exploration of new economies, it was touched on a little bit today, but I think it's going to be really interesting how artists are connecting directly with fans. Um, and then that'll be followed in probably about two weeks, um, uh, digital production marketplaces, licensing, and new ways of monetizing your works. We're gonna do a session on virtual and online music instruction. And then we'll also do one on VIP experiences and looking at sort of what the new model of home and private concerts and small events might look like and um, bringing some folks in perhaps internationally from the Berkeley uh, network as well um, that are a few months ahead in this cycle and are starting to experiment with new live events. So we have a great series. Um, just a quick, uh, Little intro, Berkeley Institute for Creative Entrepreneurship. We were founded about uh, six years ago to infuse the startup mindset across the Berkeley community. We um, have always thought that the artist career, any artist career is a startup. And so um, we're seeing that play out through these sessions. It's really clear and it's so interesting seeing sort of the back end of how these artists have approached their livelihoods and their careers. Um, and they're clearly sort of deploying these entrepreneurial skills. Um, if you wanna learn more, we've got MOOCs, free online classes. We have a four credit class. If you've got any young teen entrepreneurs, we have a high school summer program. So check us out. Um, we've got all sorts of great content online while we are socially distancing. Lisa, thank you so much for doing this with us. Um, it's been so fun to be a part of this and, and uh, to kick it off. Likewise, thanks to um, the Berkeley Institute for Creative Entrepreneurship. And for everyone who wants to um, learn more about pro sessions and the upcoming uh, events, visit grammy.com forward slash pro dash, dash sessions. We want to thank everyone for joining us today and we will see you in a few weeks. Bye, thanks. <laughs>